Hi guys, welcome again to our Micro C Pro for Peak Tutorials for Absolute Beginner series. This is tutorial 39, interfacing the DS1307 real-time clock with Peak microcontroller. The DS1307 is a low-power serial real-time clock and calendar from Maxim Integrated. If you go to its data sheet at Maxim Integrated website, it says the DS1307 serial real-time clock is a low-power full binary coded decimal clock calendar plus 56 bytes of non-volatile memory. Data and address are transferred serially through a bidirectional I2C bus. This RTC chip provides year, month, date, hour, minute and second information. The end date of month is automatically adjusted for month fewer than 31 days, including leap years compensation up to the year 2100. It can operate either in 24-hour format or 12-hour format with AM and PM indicator. These are some of the benefits of using this chip. It completely manages all timekeeping functions. Real-time clocks count second, minute, hours, date, month, day of the week, and year with leap year compensation valid up to 2100. Got 56 bytes, but rebaked general purpose RAM with unlimited write. It got a programmable score wave output signal. The other benefit is simple serial port interface to most peak microcontrollers. It uses a nice squared C serial interface which is available in most of microcontrollers. The other thing, it consumes low power. It consumes less than 500 nano M in battery backup mode with oscillator running. It has an automatic power fail detect and switch circuitry. So if the main power supply goes off, it's going to automatically detect it and switch to the backup power supply. It house in 8-pin deep or 8-pin SO minimizes required space. An optional industrial temperature range from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius support operation in wide range of applications. This is how you can interface the DS1307 with a peak microcontroller. The serial clock pin of the peak microcontroller in this case, if you are using the peak 18F26K20 zone pin RC3, should be connected to the serial clock of the DS1307. The serial data, which in this case in RC4, should be connected to serial data of the chip. These two pins are open drain, as we have learned in the I2C tutorial. They require an external pull-up resistor. In this example, we're going to use a 4.7K. The X1 and X2, this is where you can connect an external crystal oscillator. A standard 32K 76A quartz crystal can be used. The S out is the square wave output driver pin. When this pin is enabled, this pin output one of four square wave frequencies, one hertz, four kilohertz, eight kilohertz, and 32 kilohertz. This pin is also open drain as well, and it requires a pull-up resistor. If this pin is not used, as in our case, it can be left floating. The DS1307 is used as a slave device on the I2C bus. Access is obtained by implementing a start condition and providing a device identification code followed by the register address that you want to access. Subsequent registers can be accessed sequentially until a stop condition is executed. So basically, if you want to read anything or write anything from this device, as there might be other several devices on the I2C bus, the first thing to do is to send a start condition from the master followed by the device identification code, which is a 7-bit slave address. Once you have selected the required slave device, then you can select the register that you want to access and subsequent register can also access in this way until a stop condition is executed from the master. So in this example, we're going to create a simple code to read time and date information from our DS1307 
and display it on our LCD, the LCD is connected to port P of the peak microcontroller. So let us start our micro C project. So this is the project that we have started. This is the LCD connections declaration connecting our LCD to port B. We created one function to read information from our DS1307. We named it read DS1307. And whatever we read, we're going to store it in our variable read data. So as we have said, the first thing to do is to send the start condition. And once we are finished, then we can send a stop condition. I squared C1 because we are using the first I squared C module. And the second step is to send the device left address followed by the direction bit 0 if you want to write to the slave or 1 if you want to read from the slave. You can check from the device data sheet. From data sheet says the slave address byte contains the 7 bit DS1307 address which is 0001011 in binary which is going to give us 68 in hexadecimal. So this is the device address that we're going to use. Because we're going to write to the device to select it, we're going to add a zero, which is going to give us D0 in hexadecimal. So this is basically what we did. We're going to write D0. The third step is to select the address that we want to access. This is a timekeeper register address. Address 1 is for minutes. Address 2 is for hours. Address 3 is for day and so on. In our case, we're just going to call this function to access the addresses repeatedly. We're going to start with 0, which is going to be the address for second, and increment it. After we have selected the register that we want to access, then we're going to send a repeated start condition. After that, then we're going to read from the device. We said it's going to be the device address followed by a 1 if you want to read. If you add the device address followed by 1, it's going to give us D1 in X. And then we're going to read data from the, that register. We're going to store it in our variable read data. We're going to specify 0 because we don't need an acknowledgement bit. And after we are done, we're going to send I squared C stop condition. And you're going to return the value in read data. The second thing that you need to note is the data that we receive from the DS1307 is in BCD format. So basically, let's say if you want to display a number 10 in BCD format, we're going to split those two digits. For us to be able to display this data on our LCD, we have to convert this BCD to its equivalent decimal or binary number so that we can be able to display it on our LCD. These are the two functions that we created. The first one is unsigned character MSB. This is just to display the most significant bit of the BCD number. We're going to shift right four times our BCD number so that it can give us the equivalent of the most significant bit. And unsigned character least significant bit. This is how we can extract the least significant bit information from our BCD information. This is our global variables. We created some int variables, int second, int minute, int hour, hour day, d day, month, and year. These are we're going to display our information in our LCD. We created a character time array. We're going to display our information on the first line, and on the second line, we're going to display our date information. The first thing to do, the OSCON, we configured to use the 8 MHz internal oscillator because we're not going to use an external oscillator. Then as we have learned from the I2C tutorial, the first function to use is I2C1 init. We're going to run our I2C bus at 100 kHz. So we specify 100,000. Then we're going to initialize our LCD. We're going to switch off our cursor. The first thing we're going to display on the first line is time equals to and on the second line, we're going to display date equals to. Then in our while one loop, we're going to extract the second information, which is second equals to read ds. We're going to call our function and specify the address register of the second, which is zero. So we're going to call our read ds function. Then we're going to specify the address zero. The minute register is going to be address one. 
the hour register is gonna be addressed to. Here we'll have to specify whether we're gonna use hour in 24 hour format or in 12 hour format. Register three is the day of the week. It has the value from one to seven. The register address four is the day of the month. It's got a value from one to 31. The address five is the month of the year. It's got the value from one to 12. And lastly, the address six is the address of the year. It's got a value from 00, 00 to 99. So in our time array, the first index, which is index 0, we're going to display our, our value. We're going to extract the most significant information of the hour and the least significant information of the hour. The same for the minute, the, sec the same for the second, for the day, for the month, and for the year. Then we're going to display on the first line the time information and on the second line we're going to display the date information. So let us build our project. The build is successful. Let's go to our simulation. Going to run the simulation. Okay, you can see everything is working but the date and time doesn't seem to change. We need an S2C protocol analyzer to inject some data on our S2C bus so that you can be able to simulate gonna stop that the virtual instrument we've got i squared c debugger the sda pin should be connected to the sda line of the bus and scl the clock should be connected to the clock line of the bus and the trigger we're gonna connect it to the clock let's run again okay can see this is the information that it received in the I squared C bus. Now we can see our LCD display, our current time as read from our computer. It says 15 hours, 58 and 59 seconds. You can see the second is also changing and the date is the 13 May 2016. So that's how guys you can interface D1307 with the peak microcontroller. In the next tutorial, we're going to create a full digital clock using the DS1307. We're going to learn how to display the data, also how to write data to the SDS1307. We're going to have some few buttons to set the date, to set the time as well. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.